What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zamboni. I am an Earthless and Astrologer, and it's time to talk about the astrology of the week ahead. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sending, sending me a tip via Venmo Cash App PayPal. Thank you so much for doing that. You really make this whole shit possible. You make it possible for me. You make it possible for you. You make it possible for people who don't necessarily have tip money or people who don't have money to subscribe to my Patreon where there's a bunch of extra content and all that sort of stuff. You make it possible for everybody to get th- this free content. Thank you so much for doing that. Let's talk about the astrology of the week ahead. So this week we are really getting set up for the beginnings of what is to come there's a there's a lot going on here in the first place we have the exact uh, aspect of mars in scorpio square to saturn been talking about that for a couple of weeks now we've been talking about clashes we've been talking about conflict between rebels and authorities that is really going to come to a head this week um, and we are going to be looking at so at the same time mercury is in scorpio conjunct mars very closely conjunct mars at the same moment that mars is closely square to saturn also interestingly the moon will be in aquarius square to uh all that scorpio stuff and in a t-square with uranus and taurus as well so we can really see how that really comes out and wants to be strongly highlighted this week not only rebels versus authorities this also looks like so mars is our action planet right mars is the one who wants wants to do stuff and push on things and try to do it. I really like Mars and Scorpio for being tenacious, for persevering a lot, for like really trying to go and being kind of continuous in its motion. I think sometimes about a river rushing, how it's continuous. A a river never stops and a river never sort of like um, thinks about doing something in in the other way. A river is continuously moving in that direction that's a little bit how mars and scorpio approaches things to have mercury here as well mercury is going to amplify that mars mercury is going to want to so i've been talking about that as uh, mercury being the microphone right so it's literally going to amplify mars's voice in some kind of way i've been talking about mars controlling the narrative in some kind of way or been thinking about uh, mars uh, you know like uh, saying loudly Mars's peace rather than uh sort of getting told what's what you know there's there's been a lot of saturn kind of like in mars's grill telling you know winning all the time being like no this is what's really real and this is what we're going to do about it and this all this sort of stuff and mars has been sort of rebellious against that but uh has had to uh you know acquiesce to to saturn because saturn has been in a winning position this whole time mars is no longer in that uh, sort of more subservient position. And so Mars is gonna start to win some of these battles. In addition to winning that, then we're gonna start to hear a lot of, a lot more of this Mars stuff. The Mercury is gonna be there amplifying Mars's voice. Mercury is also just gonna be there amplifying Mars stuff, just making Mars stuff more Marsy. So when we're talking about doing work or handling business or being action oriented in some kind of way, uh, there's a lot to do, there's a lot to do. Then Saturn is also So in Aquarius, in a fixed sign also, right? So we can apply some of these same words like persevering and tenacious and stuff like that. Um, When I think about Saturn, I think about the grind. You know what I mean? Like just like continuously, we're just going to grind some more. Are you tired? Great. I guess it's time to grind then. Rise and grind. (laughs) This is Saturn and Aquarius to me. So um, we're going to see all of that. But Saturn is also impediment and obstacle and challenge and stuff like this right so this is the this is the grinding element i don't really feel like doing all this but there's so much to do that i just have to get up and fucking do it any damn way that's what we're we're looking at with this mars saturn aspect um this is going exact this week although we're really looking at this aspect happening all month i've been talking about it for a couple of weeks you can check out last week you can check out the week before if you have further uh interest in what's going on with mars saturn So what also is really interesting this week, I think, is that uh, Venus is in Capricorn. So Venus actually moved into Capricorn last week. Um, That, and I just didn't have time to talk about it. There was a lot going on. But that really gets interesting this week because Venus in Capricorn is going to make a sextile aspect to Mars and Mercury in Scorpio. So Venus in Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. 
right? And so Capricorn ruled by Saturn, we're sort of like thinking about Venus doing Saturn's bidding or Venus having to do what Saturn says. Venus may be having ideas and opinions, but not being able to implement them in some kind of way because uh, Saturn uh, is the boss, right? And yet Venus sextile Mars and Mercury. This to me thinks, so we can think about a sextile aspect as being confluent, as working together in some kind of way. I think about sextiles as being complementary and especially Venus loves being in that complementary position, sort of like adding this, the, adding the spice to make it like especially delicious or something like this. This is, Venus is very good with, uh, with this kind of thing. Venus is actually the planet which is associated with the sextile aspect. And so Venus making a sextile to Venus and Capricorn, Earth, making a sextile to Mars and Mercury in Scorpio, water, they're going to work together. They're going to know how to grow things or make things flourish in some kind of way, right? I can think about Venus, although nominally serving the bosses, having some kind of soft spot for the Martian narrative, right? Mars is like, I, I am through with this bullshit or uh, whatever it is, right? Feeling rebellious opposite Uranus and Taurus or maybe just like having a lot to do and continuously working and all this sort of stuff, swinging a hammer, all this kind of thing. Um, I, you know, there's, and there's something sexy about that, right? There's something like, ooh, like he's really out here doing his thing. Like, ooh, I'm really into that. I feel like that's how Venus in Capricorn is feeling. Although Venus in Capricorn is still under the the rulership of saturn and so sad but also so uh saturn in aquarius can't see venus in capricorn that's a that's a position which is unaspected and so there's a blind spot there and so with this blind spot i feel like uh venus is going to be in a spot to nourish the um the mars situation or maybe uh maybe mars is able to nourish the venus situation in some kind of way right the water going into the earth um the and and making something happen here which is which is especially interesting i think that this is especially interesting because it is um the beginning of this longer venus in capricorn cycle venus is going to be in capricorn from uh now until march and so we've got all of this Venus and Capricorn, um, you know, there's going to be a retrograde. And then when we come back on the forward pass of the retrograde, then Mars is going to be present in Capricorn, right? So we see this Venus Mars showing up another time. And all of this is going to make a trine aspect to Uranus and Taurus as well. So whatever Uranus is up to, we've been talking about uh, rebellion and volatility. We've been talking about uh, making things difficult for Saturn uh, via uh, unexpected surprises showing up where Saturn prefers regularity and control. Um, so whatever Uranus is up to, then Venus and Capricorn, re recall that Venus rules Taurus as well, right? So that's with reception. Venus and Capricorn is going to make a trine to Uranus with reception. So we're looking at really like this looks... Uh, you know, it looks really generative for the Uranus stuff. It looks really generative for the rebellious piece, for the um, unexpected, for the surprising things. So when we're thinking with that notion, then we can think about how very difficult it is to be Saturn at this time. It's, it's important to remember that each of us is Saturn sometimes. You know, it's easy to think of Saturn and the state, especially, uh, you know, Saturn with the ST like that. So uh, the a lot of Saturn words like rest or stop or stasis or state um, have this ST in them. And so it's really easy to think about Saturn and the state or uh, Saturn and, you know, authorities being like uh, cops or, uh, you know, like bureaucracy, or government, the, these kinds of things. Right. Um, but it's it's also important to remember that each of us, you know, if you have uh, a dog that you say no to sometimes or a kid that you say no to sometimes, or if you like a friend of mine was talking about um, his girlfriend, uh, like reading what I had to say and, and being like super gung ho about it until she realized that she was a school teacher and was embodying Saturn. And so there's all these like super rebellious little kids running around, all this sort of thing. Right. So each of us is going to be Saturn sometimes and each of us is going to be Mars sometimes and each of us is going right we're we're all in each of it in different areas and in different uh sort of looking at different perspectives of our own lives right and so with that in mind we can see how Saturn 
is having a tough time with stuff. But we can see how the Uranus bit of things, the sort of uh, unexpected or living on the margins or doing the weird thing in some kind of way, this wants to be empowered during this period and not just right now. We're looking at Uranus wants to be empowered for a good long period. This uh, square to Saturn is not easy on Uranus, but um, I've been talking about that as necessity is the mother of invention for a number of months now, right? There's this sense of the pressure of Saturn bearing down on things makes uh, m makes ideas fire. It's like, yo, anything but this. We got to do anything else. Let's try some stuff. It makes it possible to do things that uh, were maybe not possible or that would have been unthinkable prior, right? And so those unthinkable things becoming thinkable is maybe part of that unexpected move. So with that in mind, if we're looking toward trying to be personally successful during this period of time, then we might think about leaning on the Uranus in some kind of way, right? We still have to do the Saturn. We still have to be organized and do our routines and whatever it is, right? Saturn is pretty boring about stuff. You, you have to do all your boring stuff, right? But we can understand that that boring stuff is likely to be disrupted in some kind of way. And if that's happening, then how can we lean into that? How can we find a lesson? Where is this where can that be beneficial to me and if if you're thinking that through and you're like no i need it to work the way right then like if you know i, th I think about this with mercury retrograde a lot too it's like if you need if you schedule everything up to the brim then when things go crazy then it it throws everything off right so build in some of that extra space so that you've got some room to move so that you've got some room to wiggle because um the the wiggling expect to need to wiggle you might not know which way you need to wiggle but it's likely that some wiggling is going to take place that's what I got to say this week. Thank you so much for being here. I super appreciate all y'all. If you want to check out uh, more stuff, you can always find me on Patreon where there's uh, a bunch of extra content about uh, not only longer forecasts, but also, um, you know, how to work with it. So there, there are elections there. You can also always get a reading if you like. Um, all of these links are in my bio. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will see you next week.